Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. I'm your host, Sam Adavi. Coming to you from Panama City Beach, Florida, home of the world's most beautiful beaches. We're at the Florida Jeep Jam, where there'll be thousands of Jeeps invading the city. Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. This is gonna be one awesome car. And I said, it doesn't even run yet. <laughs> and look at it now, it's amazing. We're here at the fifth annual Florida Jeep Jam, Panama City Beach. I'm here with one of the founders, Mark Forrest. We're here bright and early on the beach because we're gonna do a beach crawl with over 750 Jeeps, right Mark? That's it, 750 Jeeps. It's called the Crawl for Turtles. Of course, the turtles, it is turtle season, so we're very aware of what the turtles are doing out and we're gonna make sure that we give them the respect they need. Now, yeah. what kind of crowd, what, what are you expecting out of this? Well, we're gonna have, as I said, over 750 Jeeps here on the beach and we're staging at Sharky's here on Panama City Beach. We're gonna be coming across over to the beach and we'll be traveling about a mile on the beach, down the beach with a great view of the, of the Gulf. This is our third year on the beach. Now, what makes your show different than all the others? We're in the Panhandle. We have a great location. We're on the world's most beautiful beaches. Panama City Beach Tourism Council help us with this. We've got a great situation here and we also have a lot of off-road excursions as well that you won't see anywhere in Florida. This is over 700 Jeeps waiting in line to go into the beach crawl. That is incredible. It wraps as far as the eye can see. I think almost every Jeep in Florida is here getting ready to crawl on the beach. Beautiful weather, not a cloud in the sky, absolutely perfect. And everybody, almost everybody, has their tops off, their doors off. They're having a great time here in the sun. What an experience. We got people all over these hotels on their balconies checking out what's going down on the beach. We got diversity of Jeeps filled with families and pets. Put your hands together one time. Welcome to Center Stage. This is Chandler. Car Car Show after these messages. Low Car Car Show, presented by Appalachian Backroads. Appalachian Backroads, Virginia is for lovers. Original Parts Group Incorporated, unbeatable quality, price, and in-stock selection for GM restoration and high-performance parts. 
NH Oil Undercoating Incorporated, NHOU, the official oil-based rust proofing system. Low Car Performance Products, quality, plain and simple. It's time for the Low Car Lowdown with Jeffrey Walls. For you high riders out there that like being able to move through the different gears on your shifter and have an automatic transmission, Low Car and Clayton Machine work together for you a automatic transmission gated shifter. This shifter allows you to do either a Tremec lever in your automatic transmission of any application type, whether it's a C6 Ford, AOD 4R70, your 350GMs, we have it for all the applications you'd like. We have these with our own special machine knobs, round or even a retro knob, and you can get it floor mount and even get a trans mount case kit if you'd like for your shifter. So call us today and get one for your application now. I noticed Pete driving in his CJ5 from a distance. Look at those tires. This is an old school, traditional looking four wheel drive. And the CJ5 was the inspiration behind all these Jeeps, correct? That is correct, Sam. Yes, yeah. it was. This is an awesome build, Pete. The big 39.5 Super Swampers look so good on this Jeep. The bumpers you just recently fabricated and installed, that is a good job. Yes, sir, yeah, thank you. Thank They're nice and straight. They're welded on. You did an awesome job on that. The stainless steel dash, you installed that yourself and did all yes, the work. Yes, I did. Now, how many times have you built this Jeep? This is the third build, and on this third build, what I've added was the fiberglass body due to rust in Florida, and it's working out great. And you've got that engine swap in there, and you kept it AMC to keep it correct, right? Just that is correct. I kept it AMC to 360, punched out to 375, has 12 to 1 flat top, H rod, steel crank, roller rockers, 576 lift cam, poly 650 dual line double pumper. And that 12 to 1 compression is going to give them some serious torque to be able to go wheeling, mud, and anything to get out of those ruts, right? That is correct. This is an awesome build. I love the way you did it. And the CJ5, guys, is what was the inspiration behind the Jeeps. It was first, then came out the TJ, then the four-door came out with the JK, and it really blew up. So this is cool to see an old-school CJ looking period correct here at this show. Thank you so much, Pete, for Thank showing you, us your Jeep. Thank you. It's not every day you see an optioned out scrambler like Mike has. This 1982 model has almost every option. It's fully original except for a paint job, correct? Correct. Now tell me about your Jeep. It's an 82 scrambler. It's pretty much all original. It, had, it was originally white. It was on the Augusta golf course, the way I understand it. And then it was on a quail farm. So in 1996 or seven, they painted it green. So this is 2020 and the speedometer just turned over 100,090 miles, so it's had 5,000 miles on it in the last 18 years. Hopefully it doesn't have the original oil in it the last 18 years, so <laughs> he's gonna come by, we're gonna give him an oil change. Yeah. Now tell me about all the options. You said there's a lot of options on this Okay, car. this game, it has factory air conditioning, it's factory automatic, which is very rare. It has power steering, tilt wheel, power brakes, and a very rare optional sliding rear window in the half cab. They only made 5,000 half cab scramblers to what I understand. The inline six looks so clean. I did not know that they, the inline six was in Jeeps that long ago. And the roll cage, I love the way you coated that. And the side wooden panels. Now I'm sure those have been replaced, correct? Those actually, it didn't have those on it when I got it. And I was online looking for old parts and I found those new old stock in the box, 1982 side rails that had never been installed. So I put those on about a month ago. You know, it's not very often you guys see a YJ amongst a sea of JKs and JLs. I'm here with Sean. He just picked up this YJ six months ago, and he's got a lot of plans for it. It's got a Renegade body kit, something you don't see very often, right? No, so these were only produced for two years, or uh, three years, from 91 to 93. Uh, this was a factory option, and it was just a body kit, uh, which would be the fenders, side step, rear fenders, front bumper, and rear bumper that were all color matched. I thought this was an aftermarket kit, like a rocket bunny, on what you see on the uh, newer cars today, but this is factory. That's a nice little upgrade. Now this is a Mercedes-Benz Blue. You plan on changing the color one day? I plan on possibly keeping it. I might even swap it back to the original red paint uh, that the fenders were originally. 
and make it all period correct. And this is Sean's daily driver. He just picked it up six months ago. So he's gonna have a lot of fun the next couple seasons making it his. And the first thing he's gonna do is you're gonna make all the chrome black. Yes, I plan on getting rid of all the chrome and making it matte black and make it look a lot more sharp, a lot more clean. That's gonna be cool. It's gonna look really good. I can't wait to come back next season and see how your Jeep is progressing over the year, right? Yes, and I will definitely be here. That's awesome. Thank you so much for showing Thank us. Thank you. I couldn't help but notice this 1971 Jeepster Commander owned by Mike. This is rare. I've never seen one. I've been to multiple Jeep shows. Tell us about your Jeep. Well, it's a 1971 Jeepster, originally a Dauntless, and it has the original engine. It's a 225 Buick V6. 3.8 liter, the same one they've been using all the way up through the uh, 2000s, and I they didn't know that until today. Had done some upgrades. Winch works. It's original winch. And it's remote control. And it's remote control. And you rewired the whole Jeep, right? Rewired the whole Jeep. And it, this thing's got a lot of goodies in it. You wouldn't think of it from the outside, but right away when you look through the grill, you can see that there is a giant transmission cooler with a fan on it and an aluminum radiator behind it. He did that for cooling, and it's got more capacity, and it took care of your overheating. Yeah, it was getting hot. On the inside, he's got a double DIN radio and a switch panel. Underneath, He's even got the exhaust with the crossover too for scavenging and better sound. A lot of little upgrades on this Jeepster that you wouldn't notice until you really start looking at it. And also uh, put a dampener because it was all metal original on the hood, on the inside, on yeah. the roof, on yeah. the inside. And uh, it makes it a lot quieter. And it looks a lot less, better. It looks finished It looks in there, better you know? and there's less road noise. So it's, it's amazing what a little headliner can do. Well, thank you so much for letting us check yeah, out your Jeep. Appreciate right? that. Thank you. What an awesome show. The people here, the venue itself, the beach environment, the variety of Jeeps that are here are incredible. Like for instance, this military display you got here showing all the old school willies, basically where the Jeep was born from. This is a cool display, great people, Florida Jeep Jam. I couldn't help but notice Tom and his 46 wheelies going through the obstacle course pretty easily, I might add. This is an awesome addition of a CJ2A. And Tom, you got a pretty cool story behind this wheelies, right? Yes, it's a good story. Uh, this is the first civilian model after World War II. And they knew that when the GIs came back from overseas, Europe, South Pacific, North Africa, places like that, that they were going to want something like this because it took them through the war. So they started producing the uh, CJ2A, which was the first model. This was 46, and it ran, I think they produced that till 49. And then they started other transitions into the other Jeep lines that you see. But this is very similar to the World War II model. The engine's about the same, the suspension's about the same. A lot of the parts are interchangeable. That's They're that close. It's got a good history to it. It's, it's older than I am. And, uh, <laughs> Rebuilt engine underneath has been uh, everything's been taken off except the frame. Yeah, absolutely. And the, now, what uh, about Ginger? Does she help you turn wrenches? Yes, she does. She does. She'll, she'll get. She'll crawl up underneath the uh, the, the Jeep with me and uh, <laughs> and sit there and stare at me. Yeah. Well, I love the Jeep. Like I said, this thing went through the obstacle course with ease. And a lot of these new guys with high lifts, they had a little bit of trouble. here with Gary in his 1952 Willys, correct? That's correct. Same year you were born. That's right. How cool is that? This is a full military version, but you said it's gone through a couple of civilians and had some stuff taken off of it, right? Well, most of the time when the Army would, would finish with a vehicle, they would pass them down to state agencies or city governments or things like that. And this, this truck I found about three or four different color paint jobs underneath it. It's been painted red. They used them a lot for fire, backwoods firefighting 
and things and it was it's a white paint underneath it which probably maybe it was a mosquito control truck for for a public service agency or and something. And this is a, this is back in the day, right? Back in, in the era. day. And then when the a government got through with it, they sold it at auction where a civilian bought it. And I don't know the history that was passed down from there, but I bought it from a guy up in South Carolina that, that I had uh, found on, on the internet. And I did not know this, but originally these things had 24 volt systems for reliability because they kept so many equipment on the, they on did. the Jeep, right? There were so many variants. By now, the Army is beginning to get really sophisticated. Love your display, everything with the military theme. I can't wait to get in this thing and go on the crawl, so hopefully well, we'll I'm be able to do that. I'm hoping we can. Thank Great you so job. much, Gary, Thank for showing you. us your Jeep. Thank you. Low Car Car Show, presented by Appalachian Backroads. Spearhead Trails, get out and explore. H&M -E Saw, the saw that cuts straight. Brothers Truck Parts, number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck parts. Stage eight, the world's best locking fasteners. See, this model was the last year they had Willys Overland on the rear bumper. Mm -hmm. And in 1950, for some reason, I can't find out why, the federal government stepped in and made them take Overland off the back of them. Yeah. I have no idea why, but I thought that was kind of a unique That's little quirk about the history of the automobile. Now this car sat in the garage in Texas before a guy purchased it for, since 2001, you said. The former owner inherited it when his father passed away. His father was from Illinois. And that's what's amazing about this uh, vehicle. It's in such good shape, yeah. the fact that it was an Illinois car. I don't see any rust anywhere on the surface or anything. Uh, it, it's, it's in great shape. And I, I asked him if his dad had had it totally restored, and he said, no, I don't think so. So I don't know, but it's, it's real clean underneath. The undercarriage really looks great. The only thing I've done to it, I've done a little brake work to it, uh, removed the old uh, uh, oil breather filter off of it, changed the the rear view mirrors on each side to some OEM type mirrors. It's a little representative with the front grille. You can kind of get an idea that it yeah. may be a Willys. Looks like it's been restored at some point in its lifetime, but what's cool is they kept the emblem original. They left that the way it is. Got a cowl right there. And this thing, the top comes down and I noticed that the side glass also unzips like your new Jeeps today. They didn't have the roll up windows. They didn't have a V8 engine. And for about 200 bucks less than what they sold these for, you could buy a Chevrolet or a Ford right. with an eight cylinder, roll up windows, and you know, the convertible top. This course behind me, I love it. Look at that, they're all in line trying to get through. It looks easy, but it's not. It's actually deceiving. It takes a little bit of skill. Florida Jeep Champ has fun for everyone, including an off-road course custom built for this event. This course offers a variety of terrain and obstacles for both the first timers and the experienced off-roaders. We got a narrow bridge to start with, lots of hills and soft dirt, a pit, and a rock crawl, but it's not for everyone. You can see the suspension working, the grip of the tires, you see why the guys do the upgrades they do. You can also see some stalkers out hanging with the big boys, getting through the course with ease. But when you get to those rocks, get a plan of action so you can get through without damaging anything or falling off course.
After a full day of events and checking out all the show jeeps, you can hang out after the sun goes down at the after party. A great time to get together for some more family fun with lots of lights and loud music. This is where you get to be creative and see how well you can light up your Jeep. With LEDs for days, you're definitely going to go home with some new ideas. Wheel wells, rock lights, light bars, and specialty antennas. So many unique ways to light up the Jeep. That wraps it up here at the Florida Jeep Jam. Stay tuned for more Jeeps in next week's episode of the Low Car Car Show, where we will be bringing you more of the action from this year's Jeep Jam in Panama City Beach, Florida.